Hello! You are listening to Chicago Children's Theater's latest radio play. Welcome to X Marks the Spot, Episode 1, The Journey. Many people rely mostly on their sense of sight when they play a game on their phone, watch TV, or go to a show. But not all. Some people have visual impairments that may cause them to see differently than others do. Some people have blurry vision. Some have vision with blind spots. Some may not be able to see color. Some see colors and shapes, but might not be able to see small details. And some people cannot see at all. For example, Melody, a character in this play, has a visual impairment, uses a cane to get around, and reads and writes using Braille. Today, we invite you to join us for this story that takes place in a time before smartphones and computers, and to give your eyes a rest and engage all your other senses. Now it's time to meet the Otis family. The year is 1972. We join them on a very important day. Moving day. The family is crammed into their old brown 1965 Chevy station wagon, piled around moving boxes and suitcases, on their way to their new home in Michigan. It's unpleasantly crowded and hot with all of us squeezed in here like sardines. What do you know about sardines, Guy? I know they stink, Devin. Like someone I know. In your face. Buzz off. <laughs> Melody, get your braille writer out here. It takes up too much space. Chill out. I'm just finishing my letter to Dad. Well, hurry up. I'm totally squashed with it in your lap. There are four children in the Otis family. Devin is 13 and the oldest of the Otis kids. Hey, man. Melody is the oldest girl in the family. She is 12 years old. Hello. Skye just turned nine. Hello, friends. The littlest one is Angel, but the kids call him Peanut because he's just a baby. <laughs> Their mother drives the old station wagon towards Michigan. She just took up a new job there as an innkeeper at a little inn by the lake. The family will live in a small house on the property. The Otis's father is away at the war in Vietnam. The kids know he is a hero, but they do wish he was here to help with the move. Devin rolls down the car window and puts his hand out to feel the breeze. Goodbye, Goodbye Chicago. Chicago. Oh, bye bye. <laughs> Melody leans her head back against the headrest and listens to the sounds of the city she loves. She feels the cool, gentle breeze coming in the window from the lake. It tickles her nose a bit. She takes another deep breath and smells the exhaust of the cars as they zip along Lakeshore Drive. She grabs her radio and flicks it on to check the time. At the sound of the chime, the time will be 1.30 p.m. Melody, Mom says to turn off your radio in the car. I was just checking the time. <gasps> I love this song! And the radio is snapped off. I know. Let's play the color game. I'll go first. This color sounds like crushing leaves in the fall. And it smells like a hot cup of tea. It tastes like snack time at school. Can you guess what color it is? Red? Orange? Yes, Devin, it's orange. My turn. This color sounds like a sick guitar solo. It feels like a skin knee. It smells and tastes like desert air. Can you guess what the color is? Hmm. Is it blue or... It's red! Mellow out, Sky. Give us a second to guess it. Now me. This color sounds and feels like bubbles. This color smells like winter morning. It tastes like... Uh... Can you guess what this color is? 
Hmm, that's a tough one. Is it white? Nope. Nice try. Melody? Hmm, is it blue? Yeah, right on. Woo! Let Peanut play. Yeah, I'll translate. Ooh! <laughs> oh! This color sounds like this. <laughs> it feels slippery. <laughs> it smells like sunshine. <laughs> Can you guess what this color is? Come on, Peanut. That's too easy. What is it then? Yellow, Yellow dog. dog. Quick, 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 quick. The game has made the remaining drive time fly, and at last, the old clunker stops in front of their new home. Which wasn't a new home at all, but rather a really old house, shoehorned between a bunch of towering leafy trees behind the lakeside inn. The old innkeeper's house is funky and beat up. Behind the house lies a welcoming, grassy green field, perfect for playing. Melody jumps out of the car and stretches and extends her cane to explore their new home. Devin darts out of the car and runs around the yard. See ya, suckers. Come back, Dev. I'll beat your butt with my cane. Sky gets out of the car and spins around in circles until she falls to the ground. Peanut then climbs out of the car. Look, a patch of sunflowers. Melody, come feel the petals and the bumpy seeds. I have to find all the new stations out here on my radio. Aw, Peanut, you bought your rubber ducky. Quack, 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 quack. I hope they have baseball in Michigan because I have my mitt right here. Of course they have baseball. We're in Michigan, Sky, not Mars. The children begin to explore the area surrounding their strange new house. This place looked totally different than Chicago. Behind the house, the children find a long, meandering path to the dunes. They walk through endless rows of tickly, swishy prairie grass until they reach the sandy ground. They feel the warm sand and listen to the sounds of the blue-green waters of Lake Michigan lapping against the shore. The Otis kids walk along the beach by a big lighthouse, splashing water on each other. Melody pauses for a moment to take in the sounds and spells of the new place. She hears water as it ripples to the shoreline. Seagulls circle overhead and make cawing sounds. She feels the sand under her feet, squishing in between her toes, and the never-ending whoosh of the breeze coming off the lake. It's okay, but it's nothing like Chicago. There's nothing to do here. Just sand and lots of stupid rocks and pebbles. Yeah, this place is a real drag. <laughs> Today in Chicago, there is lots of excitement. No one here is bored. No serene, no body, no way, no how. Candy and ice cream are literally everywhere. Today, there are hundreds of parades, fireworks, block parties, ball games. <laughs> I miss Chicago so much, I can't even listen. Five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight smooth stones. Melody, fill these. Hear those annoying seagulls circling over our heads? Buzz off. Hey, what is Peter doing there? He's groovy. He's having fun digging on the sand with a little shovel he found. The sand where Peanut is digging begins to swirl, and a small opening appears in the ground. What is that creepy sound? And out from that small opening in the ground popped a... Uh... Look, it's... a... Uh... Well... It's a thingy? The children move in closer to get a better look at the thingy. Its eyes are like a snail's eye. Yeah, look. It has ears like a bat's ears. But its nose is fluffy and fuzzy. The children had never seen anything like this at the beach in Chicago. It was small and green, and it did have ears like a bat's ears, and in fact, a big, green, fuzzy nose. 
Its tail splayed out like a peacock's tail, and it flapped loudly as it stirred from the sand. What do you want? Oh, I did not! You silly sack of snot! Take a chill pill. He's just a baby, you... you... thingamajiggy. What are you? I am... <coughs> a sand fairy, and I grant wishes. The children gasp. They had never seen or even heard of a sand fairy before. But how bad could they be if they could grant wishes? Maybe this sand fairy could make their move to Michigan even better. Join us next time to find out who, and more importantly, what this sand fairy is. Now that that episode is over, let's do an activity together. In this episode, the Otis children played the color game. That's the game where you pick a color and choose things that sound like, smell like, taste like, and feel like that color. Now it's your turn to play. First, pick your favorite color. Then let's think. Hmm, what does that color taste like? Do you have anything in your fridge that tastes like your favorite color? How about, what does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does it sound like? See if a family member can guess your color when you give them these clues. <laughs>